children of the night. What music they make. They're all gonna laugh at you. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Who are you? I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash you with this. Oh, these opening credits made me wistful. Jason Brandt pulling out the old Final Guys foursome. You like that? that it actually was sitting nice there. I never stuff. deleted it because I'm too lazy. That was a nice. It was good to see Tim with his hair and its full resplendency. Mm, Way back good times. In the day. Before we crossed the line and HR had to get in touch with us and Tim had to walk off the show. It was a whole <laughs> disaster. But we're glad to have him back along with. Tim's replacement, who jumped in so fast, Chad Lutsky. It's me, Chad Lutsky. <laughs> Jason Brandt, as always, manning the controls. Hi. And Jack Campisi, oh, gathering news and there. rap. Word. You know, Tim, I remember that the day that you emailed us and said, you know, I might not be able to do the show anymore. Mm -hmm. Chad texted me about 30 seconds later. So I think I did not. For that <laughs> you liar. <laughs> I believe he it. Was, I believe he it. was in so fast. Like you, a email to uh, you up? <laughs> 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 you liars. <laughs> so we're having Tim back because this is a very special episode. Even though there's a bunch of like kind of cool new stuff out there. The worst it. week we're we going... could have picked to do this. <laughs> Ah, whatever. We're going back in time, and we're going to review 1993s, which I can't believe is almost 30 years ago. Ticks. Jesus. Ticks is a Tim mm. pick. So, but before we get into that, there's always drinking rules, games, nonsense. So, what are you all drinking? Before we get into it, what are you, what, what are you guys drinking? I have, let me get it out of my koozie here. <laughs> I got the king. Nice. Oh, yeah. king. Yeah. There you go. A V8, a V8 okay. for Chad. Oh, wow. Yeah. I could add a V8. Listen, I you like vegetables, but those things are gross. Oh, oh man. They're good. Oh. They're good with Eat them with some cheddar cheese. Yeah. Jack Gatorade. has some Gatorade. <laughs> Any, anything extra Jesus. in that Gatorade, or is it just the lemon just lime? Electrolytes. Classic? Mm. Electrolytes. What about you, Tim? Uh, I am drinking uh, Oktoberfish. Which is ew, ew. It does not sound good. It's great. It's uh, it's just an uh, Oktoberfest beer made by Flying Fish Brewery. So that's why it's like Oktoberfish. It doesn't yeah. actually have fish in it. So it would be like the Clamato of the beer world <laughs> if it was fish. <laughs> I'm drinking from the beer slingers at Captain Lawrence Jam Juice, which they sell in four packs of Tall Boys, and if I have four, it's a full blackout. I'm on three. <laughs> So let's oh, see how wow. tonight goes. So you got jammed right before the main oh, feature. Gosh. You're just gonna like crash into your laptop and go dark. No, but I might do the fourth when we're done, and then I'll forget the rest of the night. <laughs> but luckily, my family's always there to tell me every shitty thing I say and do when I drink jam juice. All right, now <laughs> we can get into the drinking words. Who's gonna read them? I can. Oh God. Well, maybe I can't. <clears throat> maybe not. <laughs> okay, I got it. Terrible. All right, Jack, your words are steroid, knee, and creature. Hunter, yours are bug, camp, fan. Mine are mutated, Amityville, and dog. Chad, yours are woods, marijuana, and fire. Tim, yours are hellraiser, effects, <laughs> and cast. The bonus words are green, tick, and prince. 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 Fresh prince. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, shit. <laughs> I'm thinking dead prince. Oh. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Check been Charlie drinking. Murphy. <laughs> Charlie. What did the five fingers say to the face? Ah, Jack, you are the Walter Cronkite of the horror world, so I think it's time <laughs> for you to tell us what's going on in the news. Rolled up. It's the news. Yay. We interrupt this podcast for an emergency. <laughs> 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 First of all, has everybody seen the new Hellraiser trailer that hit today? Yeah. No. no. Yes. Yes. No, I'm excited. It looks glorious. Yeah. 
It does really? look good. Yeah. I I am so pumped for this. You, you get to hear Pinhead talk too, and it's awesome. Oh, yeah. we'll yeah. tell you so the pun. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Cenobites look legitimately uh, terrifying. Scary. Terrifying. Yeah. I mean, Pinhead David Brucker's talks, directing it, so I'm pumped. Pinhead talks like this. It's, it's really effective. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> What's the fox? <laughs> okay, well, check that out if you haven't seen it. It looks pretty good, and it's uh, it's, it's coming out like next month. Uh, Is it seventh. coming out on a streaming service or Hulu? Theaters? Hulu. Hulu. Oh, Hulu. Good. They can they can like they have some cachet now with Prey, so this is Yeah. Cool. Okay. Mike Flanagan chimed in this week telling people that did you know there was going to be a sequel? Well, another shining movie that was actually going to be a prequel mm-hmm. featuring oh. um, Dick Halloran. And it was shelved because Doctor Sleep didn't do well. So it said the, the term was shelved forever. Well, oh, so this was like a, a prequel now, not from like 1980s. Yeah, no, this is like a the, the Doctor Sleep people would go and make a prequel to The Shining. Yeah. Oh, what they call it, Hey Dick? <laughs> <laughs> what a stupid ass idea. I love Mike Flanagan. I am so glad this didn't happen personally. Me too. Yes. I love Dr. Sleep. I feel like everyone should watch that. It's very underrated. Really good. I don't know, man. I mean, I'm not big on prequels either, but uh, when I heard Gerald's Game was a movie, I was like, this is going to suck. And um, because, I mean, I I can't think of a harder uh, King book to adapt with all the flashbacks. I mean, half of it's just a flashback. Yeah, I feel I like anything Flanagan when I first read it. Though. But if anyone is going to pull it off, I would I would give it to Flanagan. But yeah, yeah. I just I, feel like I don't need any more Shining World. Everything he touches is gold, though. So I mean, it, it, at worst, it'll pro- it, it could be like mediocre. But still, I mean, I'm not like upset that it didn't happen. I would just rather him work on something else that we can watch. Give him the Dark Tower, please. Give him the oh, Dark Tower. Oh my god! Yeah. Today in our office, somebody asked me. If they should watch Haunting of Hill House, and I was like, absolutely. Oh yeah. yeah. And then somebody else was like, yeah. What was that other one? I was like, the Haunting of Bly Manor. And I go, but the best one is probably Midnight Mass. And they're all like, I never heard of Midnight Mass. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, go wow. right now, leave work, watch Meanwhile, Midnight Mass. Flanagan was like 30 miles from you and I, Jack, and we didn't even bother to go see him. Totally spaced on that. I saw people posting. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's today. Oh so yeah, busy. he was at a uh, Connecticut Horror Fest, right? Yeah. Yeah. Robert I was Stop that was same there. that same day I was driving up to uh Weirdo Wonderland, which is like this horror like emporium of everything you can imagine, but they were closed. And uh we went to the archive and said, and Jack, I bought you a pack archive. of Jaws 3D playing cards with 3D glasses and a stick of bubble gum in them. Oh, awesome. So I gotta go back for to when I you gotta come go to, to do place. Monster Men. It's Excellent. um it's it's small. The downstairs looks like Buffalo Bill is definitely curating the VHSs down there. Mm-hmm. That was That's awesome. What the? F- yeah, it was kind of creepy. Down, my daughter wouldn't even go down there. But <laughs> come back up and go. There's a good pizza place like right around the corner from that place. We oh, should make a yeah, trip I would up go one day. Tim, I, come on should. Up. Yeah. I need to get up there. We should I all go. Vitters we'll Vitters. just we'll just meet there and then go hang out and do stuff. There was a. It's got to be like a four hour drive for me though, right? For you, it's like, yeah. a, it's it's like a three hour drive for me or two and it a half took, hour drive. It should be 40 minutes for me. It took me two hours on Saturday. There was traffic like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, it. 95 on Saturday is nothing to mess with. But there was a $50 box edition of Ticks. Yes. Uh, I like, <laughs> if I was Tim, I would buy this, but I'll go for the $10 used Blu ray of Autopsy oh. Jane Doe. Yeah, you got it. There you go. Where's my of course, I got it over there somewhere. That's I have so the exact funny. same one. We were talking about Autopsy of Jane Doe in the office after we talked about... That's such a good movie. I love that movie. Okay, last piece of news is this. Once again, giving you a heads up on things to watch in Halloween season. I stumbled upon this somewhere. Apparently, Halloween is in the theaters right now with Halloween 4 and 5. What? Where? At Why? the 
Cinelife Entertainment, Compass Theater Pictures. I don't know who the hell these people are. Uh, I looked up, I, wherever I found it, I clicked on a site, put in my zip code, and nothing came up. So oh. I'm put, there's an asterisk on this one. You Google it and see if you find it, because I'm putting this under rumor has it. Halloween is back in the theater. Tim, I thought of you with four and five. This feels like your triple feature. What? Oh, <laughs> only if you could cram six in there. They, yeah, they, if six was in there, then it's six, a party. Is six your jam? Are they trying to get people to not go see Halloween mm-hmm. ends? <laughs> For real. But on a better note, Trick or Treat is going to be in theaters nationwide October 6th. Yeah, I saw that. That's pretty yeah, cool. I mean, that That's was cool. featured on the news a few weeks ago. Yeah. And also, it's going to be in the Alamo. They <laughs> usually put it on listen, Halloween. Jack. I know. I listened. I'm just repeating. <laughs> people don't Did you? You weren't here. Go. You weren't here when I dropped the huge news. You need to hear this. Dawn of the Dead's coming to Regal. Halloween weekend. <gasps> Ooh. You and me that date, bitch. It's amazing. You and I both bitch. saw that at the Kent Theater as children. I know. Not, not knowing I was in high know school. who each other was at the time. You were <laughs> I was married with children <laughs> in 78. <laughs> I think it was. Who the hell knows where, where actual theater I was in? We were somewhere along fucking. I'm gonna ho- I'm gonna I'm going with the theory that you were at the same movie theater as me. I, I think so. Yeah. All right, that's all the news is fit to print. Let's get going. Okay, we're going to do curation, which for those of you who don't want to go to the dictionary means here's movies that we watch and suggest that you watch or don't. We have such sights to show you. Tim, you know I'm picking you to go first, right? All right. Uh, I wasn't prepared for this, so I'm just going to wing it. Um, you can <clears throat> just pull some bullshit off your shelves. I'm gonna pull some 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 bullshit. Uh, who who no, prepares I, for final guys? I uh, I I used to. <laughs> we have was... a spreadsheet. There's some level of preparation. yeah. I got I got prepared, <laughs> but uh, I'm going. The news takes a lot of preparation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that seems does. like it. Um, I've been putting my uh, Shutter subscription to good use over the past couple of weeks because they've been dropping some killer original movies. Uh, and I watched uh, the newest one, I think. Uh, Speak No Evil. Have you guys? Oh yeah, heard of it's, it's on there now. now. Yeah. Oh my. DS Ullery was just talking about this with me on Twitter. So this movie is crazy. Uh, it's a slow burn. It's uh, about a family who they go on this holiday and they basically spend it with um, uh, another family. And they kind of become good friends with this family. And then it picks up like a year later and the family reaches out to them to invite them to their house to spend like a week. Uh, and when you they get there, they kind of start to slowly realize that like they're a little fucked up. <laughs> um, looks like a Final Guys reunion in that picture. That's the house that, that they go to. It's like out in the middle of the woods. Um and then like weird creepy stuff happens like this guy watches them have sex through that window and like nice the kid they they have a kid they both both uh couples have kids and the the creepy couple their kid had the the tongue is like missing from the kid's mouth and they show that in like the first like in the beginning of the movie and you're like that's weird and of course it's jack (laughs) <laughs> is she blonde definitely jack <laughs> i see um, you Lutsky. but yeah this is a <laughs> this is a slow burn of a movie it's it's not you know it's paced very well though because when they they go into the creepy stuff it like happens at like the right time uh and then the ending is absolutely batshit crazy so awesome very hard to watch that... very hard i was to watch. talking I heard that if you have yeah. children, this is a difficult watch. Yeah, it's the ending is fucking insane. I was like, wow, they actually did that. Crazy. It's a crazy movie. Uh, nice. Highly recommend it. It's not that long. I think it's only an hour and 40 minutes. So. Did it Shutter Original? Yeah, I think it is. Man, they've been yes. killing it. Yeah, it says like, Shutter Original on it. So oh, like The cool slow burn stuff lately. Yeah, I uh, I was very impressed. So I just realized the movie I was thinking hmm. of was Fear No Evil. Close, <laughs> no cigar. Not, Off by about not even forty close. years. Not, not close at all. 
All right. I'll check that out. I've never even heard of it. Check well, it out. Jason Janine Pipe voice. said the same thing about the children. She watched it and was like freaking out. Yeah, oh, it's there rough. we go. As right. long as the dog is okay, that's all that matters. All right, Jason, what do you got? I watched a show, which is why I only have one thing. I watched Chapel Wait. It came out, oh, I, th- I think last year mm-hmm. yeah. on Epics. I had to get a <laughs> use the uh, week long promo or what the hell, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, oh, the, yeah trial. the trial. 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 Jesus. Description. Hey, I'm smart. So Today. this is uh, supposed to be based on Stephen King's Jerusalem's Lot. Mm-hmm. And it is, but it's kind of a combination of Jerusalem's Lot and Salem's Lot, which hmm. I found interesting. Because uh, Salem's Lot is told, I mean, it's been 20 some years since I read it, but I think it's ex- exclusively through letters a guy is reading in a house. Yeah, it's um, a good yeah. It's it's a great story. I, I love Jerusalem's Lot. And there's a lot of that story in this, but they really mix in a lot of Salem's Lot into it, which made it pretty interesting because I didn't know what the hell was going to happen, even though I've read both stories. So I actually thought this was really good. It's 10 episodes, I think, maybe 50 minutes a piece. Uh, but there's some pretty, pretty cool gore. It takes place in the 1800s, I think. So there's uh, like a lot of interesting set pieces and stuff, but it looks phenomenal. I mean, it looks like it has a higher budget than it probably did, but definitely worth a watch. It's almost a shame it's on Epics because I'm assuming almost no one has watched this because who the hell has Epics, you know, but uh, totally worth it. So if you get a chance or you want to do the seven day trial, I think it was seven days that I had. So how many episodes? Uh, Ten. So definitely worth it i think you guys would really dig it it's a little bit of a slow burn at times just because of the time period you know they're not zipping around in cars and shit but uh are they fighting predators (laughs) yes yes uh yes woman figures out uh predator technology in the last five seconds of the movie and kills (laughs) it Uh, awesome (laughs) yeah so in these screenshots didn't do it justice but once the story starts to unfold it's it's an interesting take. I think you in particular would like it, Jack, because you like your vampires. I'm in. I enjoyed yep. it. Oh, you did see it? Yeah. Of course it's, you did. Of course you have an Epics account. It's, it's crap. Dude, uh, no. there's a there's another show on Epics, and I, I might just, if it comes back to me, I might just use this because it was phenomenal. It uh, could come back to you. From on Epics? I'll talk about Never it next. I'll talk about it. it next. It's yeah, amazing. Okay. All right. Keep it in your pants. I'll try. All right. No promises. Uh, Moving on to Tim Tooby, otherwise known as Chad Trick or Treat. Yeah, you guys know it, man. I was I was hanging out at Tooby, and uh, they've got a movie on there (laughs) from 1980 called Macabre that I'd seen before, but I I wasn't sure. Uh, I saw because I couldn't remember the movie that I saw and loved a year or two ago, and I put it on. It was like, this is the one I sat through it anyway for a second time because it is glorious it's directed by um mario bava's son oh and, lombardo Loves yeah uh who who did uh demons and uh um, yep. which i always thought was argento for some reason but i guess it was just written by argento but, demons um, makes too much sense to be i uh, think argento. yeah <laughs> i think that uh, that's true i think that um uh this was his first one and this, had, I'm hoping that none of you have seen it, so you you can get see this for the first time and just nope, never seen ho- it. hopefully fall in love I with haven't. it. I haven't. I want to talk about the entire thing because I just want to see jaws drop and 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 you guys laughing and stuff, but I won't. <laughs> this chick right here, she she's at the very be- at the very beginning of the movie, she's um having an affair. Um, her kids don't know it. Her husband doesn't know it. Uh, right at the beginning, her husband leaves for work, and then she leaves her youngest boy with her daughter, and the? um, they uh, so that she can go to this uh, boarding house in New Orleans. Man, they are just. All right, I'll some... stop if it's real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really. If wow, but we won't remember. Okay. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So she she frequents this boarding house in New Orleans where a blind guy runs it with his mom. And uh, she, this is where 
you know, she gets it on with this uh, guy she's having an affair with. So she leaves her, her kids alone and the daughter knows what's going on. So while the mom is away screwing this guy, she drowns the little brother um, just for whatever reason, you know, just because she's uh, evil and hates the mom and, and knows it would break the mom's heart. So while this chick is at the boarding house, she gets a phone call. Hey, this just went down at your house. She panics, takes off with the guy that she's screwing. This is all in the first five, ten minutes. Takes off with Jesus. the guy and they get into an accident <laughs> that cho- that takes his head clean off. Um, the guy that she's having an affair with. So she freaks out. And then we have one year later as she's walking out to, out of a mental hospital. By this time, obviously, she's lost her, her family um, due to her both her her uh, mental illness and the fact that she was having an affair. But she continues to live in this boarding house where this blind guy runs it now by himself because his mom has passed. When she this this blind guy has a thing for her. Uh, I'm not sure why. But uh, at night he can hear her like masturbating <laughs> uh, above That's him. So awful and, loud. And upstairs. <laughs> And she's she has built this shrine to her lover who she, you know, got into this car accident with. And it's a legitimate like shrine, like something you would like a, a kid would make in school that folds out with cardboard and it has all these things about the you know little Like a diorama. And, <clears throat> kind of. And it's foldable. And it's just got pictures and like a pop up book. Does yeah. it have bits of does bits it have any hair. dreadlock? I got a bunch a of those in the other room. Bag. I'm still stuck on the, the loud masturbation. How did how did that work? Yeah, that happens a lot. That's my um, tenant. And she's calling this guy's out name this guy's name out as though he's there. And this blind uh, guy running the place, he's like, What is going on? And so he's trying to figure out what's going on. In the meantime, the daughter keeps coming back in the picture to just kind of traumatize the mom, doing things like sneaking into a room, leaving a picture of uh her, her little brother on the thing so that her mom could see it, and then bailing so her mom could see it and have a hard time with it and stuff like that. And this goes on and gets crazy i love this movie and it has one of those endings where it's like okay that was a fun movie that was crazy and then it has that like two second ending where it's like okay now it just went lo- next level and it's just only like two seconds like the last two seconds right and uh you guys have to see this i mean i'm not gonna I, say that I'm you're in. that you're I'm in. gonna be in love with it it's not like a i know if you don't like italian horror i don't i don't really see this as italian horror i mean it's in the it's in the u.s uh, granted a lot of them are but the dubbing isn't, you know, horrendous, and it, all of it makes sense, and it's all total linear. You know, it's not wow. disjointed. What a stretch! But please watch it. And, that was uh, a lot of plot. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> I'm watching yeah. it. I'm gonna watch I'm it. Like, I zoned oh, out. Good. Like I zoned out right when walking out of the mental institution. So I'm just nodding. I'll watch it. Oh, I thought you, you would tune in when I said <laughs> masturbating, and then you would just would not. Stop. I'm gonna so watch it just busy. for that. My, my ears perked up. I'm Jack is too busy masturbating. To but yeah, it. Macabre, 1980 on Tubi, of course. Reminds me of Bloodbeat when the woman, in, oh a woman God. in Wisconsin, masturbates and a samurai appears yeah. and kills people around her. <laughs> yes, that is one of the best movies ever made. <laughs> this woman doesn't so do it so f- with such ferocity as that woman did, though. <laughs> wow, ferocity. ferocity! That's a great word. I hate my okay. vagina. <laughs> ferocity that's a drinking word (laughs) all right jack i am going to start with a book what by laurel hightower Hightower. Uh, nice what did you did she get you chocolate last week and you owe her listen man i got this it scares the cares you weren't at because i read it earlier i didn't need to go there oh Uh Great book. This is not what I expected. Um, not that I didn't expect a great book. The story, it's like a freaking trip, man. This is a woman's journey. Uh, she meets a, a guy at a, like a truck stop. They end up, uh, it's bad weather. They're, she's following him as they're driving through the mountains of uh, West Virginia. Something, they encounter something, bad stuff goes down. And uh, it gets spooky and trippy and suspenseful I, I i i don't know what i was expecting but this is like a small contained story uh mm-hmm. and you i said this in my tweet about this 
Laurel is so good at characters. You get to know this person really quickly and throughout it, you're hearing like the voices in her head. Her ex-husband's voice is like haunting her. And uh, I just, in all her books, she get you get to know the characters really well and and throughout the book. So it was a really good read. So Awesome. Oh, well and it's a Mothman book. It. We don't have enough of this. Yeah. And it's a book. Nope. Good stuff. I always, I, I said when I first read that, I was like, if an editor called two people in to say, both of you write a Mothman book, but I don't want you to be anything like each other, this would be me and Laura going completely opposite. Yeah. <laughs> Introspective, batshit stupid. That's me. <laughs> I've heard a lot of good so things no. about it. It's really it's a good. good. Book. It's a trip. All right. Well, I'm not starting with a book. I'm starting with a movie. I went to Shutter because I figured Chad's got to be covered. So I wanted to do some Shutter stuff. But I'm going Shutter Horror Adjacent. So the first movie I'm going to talk about is Perdita Durango. Have you guys seen this thumbnail on your Shutter account? I don't think so. So this stars Rosie Perez in 97 oh, and Javier Bardem. Wow. Ooh. So in 97? Rosie Perez, 97. Jesus. Rosie Perez is about as sexy as she'll ever be in this movie. She's kind of like this hard nosed criminal who wants to go to Mexico to spread her sister's ashes because her sister was murdered by some fucking lunatics along with her, uh, no, by her husband, along with their children, which they show at one point. So she wants to go spread her ashes. And Javier Bardem is like a drug running piece of garbage with the I don't know if there's any pictures of his hair in this movie. It's tragic. <laughs> it's like it's it's a mullet with the side shaved and everything. It's it's amazing with the weird bangs like Betty Page bangs. So, yeah, there we go. So he's kind of like a low life drug runner. He picks her up because she's dangerous. <laughs> he's dangerous. Let's hang out in Mexico. This feels like a Tarantino uh, movie, by the way. Um, I I cannot do this any more justice than the Wikipedia page. By the way, this is um, I will, is Gandolfini. Gandolfini is in this movie and steals the show. By the way, they don't even mention in the it Shutter that he's in the movie. Um, but talks about Bardem picks her up and they engage in scams in which he pretends to be a Santeria priest and hacks up corpses while snorting cocaine. Which that scene is amazing. He's like it's this Santero priest to scam like white people out of their money. And he's literally hacking up a corpse, chopping off its penis, eating the heart in this Jesus. weird ceremony. Yeah. I got uh, So his name is Romeo. So his latest scam is working for gangster Mr. Santos, transporting, get this, refrigerated human fetuses to Las Vegas, where they will be used to make cosmetic moisturizer. Wow. As if that's not all, Perdita, played by Rosie Perez, who was naked several times, the sex in this is so disturbing. <laughs> it has to be seen to be believed. Uh, Perdita devises a plan that they should capture a gringo and eat him as part of her Romeo ceremonies. <laughs> so they kidnap like the whitest teenage couple they can find and these this guy and this girl are on this fucking adventure through mexico this entire time they're, and they're both getting screwed by perez and bardem and they're screwing each other and they're covered in chicken feathers at one point <laughs> this movie's <laughs> fucking crazy it's absolutely crazy it's it like sounds like over, the best movie ever made it's me. like over i think it's over two hours long it felt like 10 minutes to me because it was just and gandolfini is a DEA agent who's out to get Bardem, but he knows what Rosie Perez is like. And the shit that happens to him in this movie, <laughs> it's amazing. He just, he's getting beaten, stabbed, shot, run over, and he just keeps coming and keeps coming. It's Sounds it's great. great. He's the best part of the movie, by the way, by far. So I can't say enough good things about Perdita Durango. I'm and so if you need good. horror... You got the Santa Rea thing with hacking up corpses and stuff, so there you're going to get some blood there. You almost you almost lost me with Perez, that voice, man. I love it. It's Rosie fine. Perez. It sounds it sounds fun though. She doesn't I can't talk much. I've never heard of it. 
She's great. I had never yeah. heard of it either. And I was like, uh, let, me, let me check this out. And I was like, oh, this is if you told me Quentin Tarantino directed this, I would be like, oh, yeah, this is like I wonder if it got Tarantino. lost in that wave of post Pulp Fiction Tarantino mm-hmm. knockoffs in the 90s. Yeah, it might have come it, out the same weekend as like things to do in Denver when you're dead and disappeared. It, it does sound like a uh, Tarantino Rodriguez, like yeah, like horror noir or something. Maybe. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Huh. Bardem is insane, like I absolutely watch insane. So I'm excited. Watch it. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, Tim. Oh, um, all right. That show you so, want to talk about? Yeah, I'll talk about this show on Epics that we watched on a on a whim. Um, it's called From. Have you guys heard of it at never all? Never even heard of it. No. I've heard of Fromage. It's criminal that you've never heard of it because it is amazing. Um, it stars Harold Perrineau, who you've probably seen around. He was in um, Lost oh. and also yeah, yeah. Uh, 28 Weeks Later. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Great actor. Oz. But... Uh, it it's about a, this. It starts off with this family, and they're they're on like this uh, cross country vacation thing, and they're driving, and they go down a road. And when they get to the end of the road, it starts over again at the beginning of the road. And so they're like, "What the hell?" So they they go through this town again, this small little town, um, and then they get to the end of the road, and they're back at the beginning of the road again. And they, it keeps going in a loop and a loop and a loop, and they realize that there's people there living there. And now they're trapped in like this town and they can't get out and nobody can get out. These people have been living in this town for years and um, they've kind of have like this little society. And so every night he rings the bell to let them know that sundown is happening because at night all these vampire ghosts come out and start attacking (laughs) everyone. Um, And it is the most batshit crazy thing i've what? ever seen in like a television show it's insane dude like it's huh. and so like um it's written really well like the character work is is really awesome and it's a big cast because it's like it's almost like stephen kingish where it's just like a a huge cast of characters and they all have like their own shit going on and um just the acting is really good uh, some of the special effects i forgive a little bit because it's on epics and i feel like their budget is probably a lot smaller than you would get anywhere else but sure um just the story is really cool the concept is cool and it does remind me a lot of lost in in the way that like it you don't know why these people are here you don't know what's going on you don't know how they got there nobody knows anything they just know that they're stuck in this town they can't get out and for some reason there's monsters in the woods that come out at night and try to fucking Jeez. eat your hearts and shit. So it's, it's wild. It's very good. And, um, I wish more people would watch it. Hopefully unlike lost, the writers knew where it was going when they started. It's on epics. It's on epics. Yeah. We, uh, we actually got the, the free trial for it. Um, because I, I did have, I did have epics like a while ago. Uh, cause I wanted to watch, I think St. Maud was on it and I, and it was the only way you could watch St. <laughs> Maud. So I I got Epics and then I I canceled it. And so I think we used my wife's email address and and got another free trial just to watch from because we heard so many good things about it. You can create endless Gmail accounts. Yeah, definitely um, check it out. And it's very binge worthy. The only problem is the only problem is it's only one season so far and there's going to be more. And I just want to watch them now because I don't need to know what the fuck's going on. Hopefully there'll be more. It's already renewed for right. season two, so um, they are coming That's out a release. season two. But yeah, it's yeah. awesome. If you like, if you like, like Lost, and then just like, I don't know, vampire, ghost, horror stuff, you'll you'll dig it. Sounds uh, good. Cool. Interesting that all of a sudden, Epics is trying to make a play. Yeah, I know. It's hmm, huh. it's cool. Hmm. All right. I I'll hope it takes off because I want at least five seasons of. They the need show. to merge with another platform i can't be handling all these <laughs> it's yeah. too much it's, it's crazy a lot. i'm telling you it's going to be just like cable in five years you're going to be able to order a package yeah. with uh-huh. 10 streamers on it for 50 bucks a month or something yeah they're all going to get bought it's, out we're just going to be right back to cable yep. yeah exactly we <laughs> thought we escaped on demand. 
Which is all better right. because so, with all these separate channels anyway, when you add it all up, it's the same price fucking cable is anyway. So yeah, it's getting to be more. Yeah. yeah. So Jason, I feel like the audience of Final Guys feels like your wife. We realize you only have one bullet in the chamber, so we have to move on to the next guy who walked into the bedroom. And that's Chad Lutsky. Uh, wow. I read a book. My name Aaron is Big Dick Black. You up next time she sees you for that. One. <laughs> yeah, Aaron would. Jesus, I'm sorry. That was that was not very moist of me. I just ignored him, Jason. <laughs> I read a book. This this is not horror, but it's written by a horror author, and I do need to to give you the caveat that this book was apparently I found out was dedicated to me, and uh, has a really <laughs> flattering dedication in here. Don't laugh. Really? This is yeah. Well, I, it's the I, fact I, that you didn't know. It's yeah this that is, you didn't know. <laughs> well, I I found out a little bit later. Um, and it's been out for a couple of years. I got myself a copy or the, the author sent me a copy. And, uh, what's weird is it's a South of here by Edward Lorne. This is not, oh, Ed, like I said, yeah. this is not horror. This is a novella, mm-hmm. but, um, this, it, what's weird is, yes, it's dedicated to me, but, uh, this book, it feels like it was written specifically for me because it scratched every tiny itch that I have when I'm reading a book. And uh, I can't express to you how much I, I love this book. I've read Edward Lorne's, uh, one of his other books, a horror uh, novel. Um, but, and it was, it was, it was okay. I enjoyed it, but this was totally different, man. Yeah, because it was dedicated it, to you. Probably, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that's the uh no i wanted to preface that just so that i didn't but probably maybe i shouldn't because you think i'm being biased but i am not being biased he's I'm probably thinking god that. damn it why'd you do promote this two years ago no i <laughs> i have <laughs> this is on my top five of the year um wow. uh, a couple of lansdales and a couple of other indies are, are in my top five uh this is way up there close to number one and it is about a have you guys ever seen Pervert Park, the uh, the documentary? I think it's called Pervert Park. Every time I pull up in front of Hunter's house. Yeah, I was just going to say, that's where Hunter's Okay, so you've just out. been there. All right. <laughs> been Park's there. closing soon. There. Let's wrap this shit up. <laughs> um, Pervert Park is a, is a documentary about um, uh, a, a trailer park that's dedicated to uh, sex offenders, and they live there. <laughs> together and they have like these uh um almost like a 12 step meetings you know where they they all meet uh some of these people in the documentary are absolute pure scumbags some of them are there because um you know i don't know uh you know some of them are just like uh you know i was molesting my kid for so many years and then some are just like i was dating this chick when i was 20 and she was 16 and it's like what you know wow and you did time for that so you know not everybody in the in the movie is just a complete scumbag right. um i'm not encouraging 20 year olds to date 16 years i'm just saying I prison time you did, but you can roll that back <laughs> whatever <if you> want. <laughs> whatever uh so anyway uh <laughs> What does this have to do with this book? <laughs> what the? Fuck is that? That, that that's hold on. The, the book is a the book is the latest yearbook from the high school down the, the block. book is from. You guys it's the guest tonight. book from the trailer park. The book is uh it took inspiration from that, and it uh this guy uh loses his job or no he's on uh, unemployment, and he loses unemployment, so he's forced to go live with his dad who lives in one of these trailer parks like this. And uh, so it's got this crazy cast of characters and um, wild stuff goes on in this trailer park. And, you know, there's drugs and drinking and all this stuff. It's really just a slice of life thing. It's not really something that's for everyone, probably. But it's really raunchy. It reminds me a lot of um, like a dark Joe Lansdale meets like Bob Ford. I guess that's a um, huge compliment right there. Yeah, it is. And the, the writing is amazing. Uh, the funny thing is, Edward, Ian and I, Edward Lauren and I were, were talking a few years ago about writing something together. Never panned out. One of the ideas he had was, was this. And he just said, Hey, let's write something about that pervert parked uh, documentary. And I was like, I'd rather not. 
I immediately and thought of you. He I did it, that. man. And I wish I was right there with him because it is amazing and I love it. So I would encourage people to um, to check it out if you'd like, kind of like, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Just, yeah, like uh, it's very noirish, but uh, yeah. also just slice of life. Um, and I'd very do that gritty. in a second. I love him. Very He's gritty. So oh, good. it is slice awesome. Slice of life? Whose life? This, this poor well, not your life, life in this Connecticut. Loser. But yeah, south of here. That, That's it, man. Cool, nice. Thanks for listening to me talk about Pervert Park. I love that the book is dedicated and, and inspired by you. Uh, not inspired by Pervert Park. Park, Chad Lutsky. Here we go. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> I'm surprised to hear a raunchy book about fucked up people dedicated to you is something you enjoyed yeah <laughs> he had seven bags of hair in plastic bags <laughs> <laughs> you guys are dicks today <laughs> and one 16 each, year old girl he was one, only 20 it seemed all right but according to the law, it fuller was. and more blonde than the last she had a pretty mouth and he had ideas and the law said no, so he spent some time away in Pervert Park. Who's Jack, next? sing the song. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jack, what you got? Oh my God. I get to follow that up. Chad quits. This is it. We drove. This is edge. it right here. You broke <laughs> I'm just glad because usually I'm the one taking the abuse, so I'm just glad it's not me. Yeah, I mean, we had him on here to shit on him, and Chad steps. I'm front. enjoying every minute. Of I'll this. take the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Uh, <laughs> I watched a new movie called House of Darkness. It's got Justin Long and Kate Bosworth. Oh, I've Justin heard about Long's doing a lot of horror movies, and it's kind He's of great. a horror comedy ish. It's it's got it's got some humor to it. There's sort of a spoiler thing that I'm going to hint at. Maybe you'll figure it out. So he's picked her up at a bar and the movie picks up as he's driving her home. And she lives in this big castle in the woods. Like I call it a mansion. But once he sees it, he's like, my God, you live in a castle. So uh, he comes in to have a drink and he's hoping to get lucky. And she's been flirting with them and whatever. And so they're having a couple of drinks and the conversation is very, he says something that maybe has a double meaning um, or off the cuff and she'll like call him out. Is this the prequel to Barbarian? It, there are some similarities. <laughs> there are some similarities in his character. Wow. Um, so just when he's, they, they think that they're alone, her sister is also home. Now, I'm not going to give away what's going on in this movie. All I'll tell you is Kate Bosworth's character's name is Mina, and her sister is Lucy. So, oh, I wonder where that's mm, going. I see. Jesus Christ. I see. Sounds like a mummy movie. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Close, Hunter. For the record, I, I enjoyed this movie, but a lot of people aren't going to. It's almost all conversation and i like that mumble core yeah. vampire movie. it's it's witty and 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 smart and there's some surprises along the way however there are a few times in the movie you're like i kind of feel like we had this conversation already mm. um and there's a lot of conversation that leads to kind of some excitement at the very end of the movie so all the action sort of happens later so you got to be ready for that so uh, I think I saw that Neil LaBute wrote and directed it. Is that correct? That the guy from uh, the Wicker Man. Remake. Yeah, he did the Wicker Man remake, but um, he's also a playwright. So is it like almost like a play the way you yes. kind of described it? Yeah, yeah it sounds so. like it, right? That's and cool, though. I, I'm into that. The cast is very strong. Justin Long plays sort of the everyman who is kind of a creep, kind of a nice guy thing. Yeah. <laughs> right so perfectly uh that i enjoyed his performance like i said i i rented it i enjoyed it but i think there's going to be some people who are like this could have been an ep you know uh, an episode of a uh, anthology movie or a tales mm -hmm. from the crypt um 
maybe you with the what? hint oh, I gave, I was I I enjoyed it, but it's uh, like it's not going to be in my top ten or anything like that. But it, I, but I it's got it was Justin like, Long, and I like everything he does. Yeah, me he's too, great. man. He's great. He, he yeah, he makes other than Tusk, he makes some great uh, decisions. What? Tusk is great. I disagree dude. with you. Tusk is great. He, he Tusk is amazing. I he love was the Tusk. worst thing in that. Oh, he was great in the that. movie tonight. Yeah. He played. They're going to be played that character. Perfectly. Kevin Smith's talking about a sequel to Tusk. Yeah, I yeah. would. Yeah, I would watch that in a minute. God. No, I'll watch it. But Justin I, Long I does a lot of great uh, indie movies. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, so you know what? I paid to watch it. Might want to wait till it comes down, but it, I'm maybe in. watch the trailer and see what you think. I'm in. I liked it. All right. Nice. Anybody? Who's up? Are, we, are we done? Are we Is done? That it? Can we talk about ticks? Did yeah, Hunter freeze? Oh, Hunter froze. Oh, good. No. Wonder. Okay. Well, if everybody's done, then let's jump into the main let's feature jump. without <laughs> the, the dumbass. <laughs> you like scary movies? Uh huh. What's your favorite scary movie? Uh, I don't know. You have to have a favorite. What comes to mind? He's oh, coming back. There he is. Oh no! Hell, I I improved everything in this house. Everything's better. I don't know what happened there. Whatever. There's a hiccup. A minor. Well, hiccup. we're in the main feature now. No, we're not. I got one to talk about. Oh no! Nope. Too late. Already Too late. played the bumper. no. Save it for next week. Nope. Son Suck a boner. Bitch. You're I the watch host. Freeway. I watch Free Freeway on Shutter, and Reese Witherspoon is amazing. So, all right, here we go. <laughs> Whatever, assholes. Way to jump the gun. Don't give me a moment. That is a good movie. You froze. You're inter- it's a great movie. Upgrade your internet. Oh, I, and maybe this won't happen. I did upgrade my internet, you son of a bitch. You're never around, so you don't know, but it happens. <laughs> I'm Clearly. surprised he couldn't tell you upgraded it. I just hate all of you. I fucking... Whatever. So here we go. We're going to get into the main feature. Ticks. Who wants to lay out the synopsis for Ticks? Is it Jack? Is it a wrap? What are we doing? Or is no, it Tim, Tim? Because this is Tim's pick. I think it's Tim. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so this is a great movie from 1993 uh, starring Seth Green. <laughs> no, go ahead. Continue. No, oh. that's that's too distracting. I can't. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to rap to it. How, Just how about, how about... talk in your dulcet tones. I don't know. It's a little what... louder. How's that? Okay, good. All right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, starring Seth Green. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, a lot's changed since you left the show, Tim. So you're going to have to deal with this. This is the All thing right. now. <laughs> is that what you do? Is that yeah. What yes. Now? Jack raps usually. You yeah. Do. You, you Jack does on, like mumble rap over it. You put on love, love music, making love music, and it yeah. depends. Jack preaches to it. Yeah. I don't know. I can't do that. I'm not that talented. <laughs> it's a special talent only Jack has. Anyway, <laughs> Chicks, 1993, uh, starring Seth Green, um, Carlton from Fresh Prince, and uh, Clinton Howard. And it's basically about uh, a bunch of um, delinquent youths who go on a trip into the woods and they encounter... <laughs> Uh, ticks that have been blown up to like yay big due to toxins that have leaked into mother nature uh, mm-hmm. via a illegal marijuana farm that's also out in the middle of the woods and so chaos ensues and these kids have to hunker down and try to survive uh, the ticks I think that's uh, well said. Would have been better proving that marijuana there. does kill. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's a gateway drug to being. It's so it's so funny. Like watching this now because in like 1993, like you know, it was illegal yeah. everywhere. And now, like I literally went to the dispensary like 20 minutes before I put on the movie, and I'm like, this is just like weird. Like, <laughs> like. <laughs> Did you love the fact that at one point when they went to like that little like rest stop, there was a sign for marijuana, but it was M A R I H U A. Yeah, they spe- marijuana. yeah, marijuana, marijuana. Yeah, yeah. Well, and they well, actually said it like, said it like that. They said yeah. it like that. Like the the villain in the movie was like marijuana. Like he said it like that. Marijuana, Mary Jane. 
I don't know what what that was about, but I don't know. So this is a Tony Randall movie, which I did not realize. I just watched a Tony Randall movie like two weeks before called Fist of the North Star, which is hilarious <laughs> nonsense oh, as Jesus. well. So this guy uh, has a style that uh, fits my taste. Not to, not to be confused with Tony Randall, who played Felix on The Odd Couple. Well, I was <laughs> <laughs> totally different than him. He also directed Hellraiser 2, which is the only other good mm. one in the series. But you know, the special effects at the end of Hellraiser 2 are yeah. special. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Jason, what did you think? And uh, this isn't your first time, I'm sure. I've never seen this before. You never Some, saw Ticks what? before? No. The timing of this was perfect. I, someone sent this to me like six months ago, and I've been waiting for Halloween to watch it. So when uh, Tim picked this, I was like, I'm just going to double dip and do it so bad it's good. So uh, I was having some brewskis while watching this, and I freaking loved this movie. It is so ridiculous. Like, every step of the way, this movie is just nuts. And I dug the hell out of it. It's <laughs> it's a thing. I mean, when you hear there's a movie called Ticks, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. a thing that exists with killer ticks from marijuana. So uh, I quite enjoyed this. Marijuana. Marijuana. What about you, Chad? Um, I saw this uh, like 30 years ago almost when it when it came out. And I remember really, really enjoying it. And so I was looking forward to watching it again. And then when I watched it through the whole thing, I didn't remember a single scene. <laughs> so I'm like, is this the movie that I saw? Um, but Did you yeah, see it in the theater? It, no. Uh -uh. I saw it on oh, VHS. Okay. Um. Love the effects. Love Clint Howard. Hate the rest of the cast, except for Booze and Buddy, maybe. And uh, yeah, wanted, to, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I really enjoyed the. I was actually impressed by the ticks themselves, particularly when they would run. Uh, right. Oh, that, yeah. was, that was super impressive. Uh, yeah, but lo loved the gore. I, you know, I had some. I didn't love it. Uh, but I do enjoy this movie and I definitely recommend it for anyone who's looking for some kind of cheesy creature feature thing because you're you're gonna be real happy about it. But yeah. What about you, Mr. TikTok Jackie? I had never seen this movie. I've been aware of it forever. I cannot believe this. This is crazy. This is not that's why I voted for this when you guys were throwing out things. Uh I've always been aware of it. I knew Mickey Dolan's daughter was in it. That made me want to watch it. But I just, you know, it's, I never see the thumbnail to remind me to watch it. Or I would have watched it this year or last year for this show. Because we're always looking for something. Just it, It's right. not crossed my mind. But I took it for granted that it's always going to be there. So I started watching it. I had no idea all the other people who were in this movie. <laughs> I'm like, wait, Seth Green? Carlton? Ron Howard's brother? Mm-hmm. Bosom buddy. Ron guy? Howard's father, Rance Howard, was the yeah. sheriff. Yeah. The really? Howard family. Yeah. <laughs> um so I'm I was just like out of my mind. I I mean, I wish Joe Bob showed a movie like this every week. This is what we yes. want when we watch these movies. Yes. Um yep. so I, I had a blast with it. And then all I kept thinking the whole time was. I wish like the sci-fi channel in them would watch this and just appreciate practical effects. Yes. It's just so much mm -hmm. better than these mm -hmm. CG things that they do now. Uh, the, the special effects are so great. The heads, <laughs> limbs, oh, yeah. and the ticks themselves. Mm -hmm. So much fun. This was just a blast. This is a video store, you know, classic. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel the same way. I'm always, I love anything that's nature slash animals just attacking human beings. And I, this might be the fourth or fifth time I've seen this movie. A, it had Amy Dolan, Spicky Dolan's from the Monkees, his daughter, which, remember that Genie movie that she did back in the late 80s, early 90s? No. Yeah. What the hell was that? Oh, she's in a Witchboard movie, right? I th yeah, maybe two or three. But she's in the second witch board, maybe the third. I don't know. Yeah, I That's was captivated I by Amy Dolan. So, oh, like, cool. when you when you see the ticks cover, 
it's her face, her terrified face with the tape. Yeah. It yeah. should be Clint Howard's face. Screaming, I'm infested. <laughs> that is awesome, Tim. I mean, that's when we cover. Shit, that is so brilliant. Uh, it, it also it. has bosom buddies, uh, Peter Scolari, who's like kind really of cool. a camp counselor for the nice. father or whatever. And uh, Seth Green is uh, young and as tall as he'll ever be. So that was awesome to see. <laughs> <laughs> he looked exactly the same. Yes, no difference. I, I love this movie, man. I this I get a kick out of this movie every time I watch it. The practical effects are just awesome. Like Chad, you brought up the way the ticks move. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, they did such a good job with that. And the they pulsating really egg sacs, and yeah. it's gooey and it's gross and it's so this, gooey. This movie's a ton of fun and dumb. Dumb as guys- the day is long and great. <laughs> Did you guys it's think it was dumb. hilarious that there's these giant egg sacs that nobody's talking about, even when there's one in the closet? Yeah. Like, nobody says yeah. anything, but as though it's just a cobweb, and they're like, oh. Ah, yeah. Well, like, it's they're so city stiff. kids. Ah, I'm not putting my know? clothes in there. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Close the door. Close the door. We uh, we didn't find out what Tim thought. Out. He didn't say. Yeah. No, no. I'm waiting for oh, Tim here. So Tim is uh, Tim started out the synopsis, and I'm finishing with Tim. Yeah, there so um, this movie is has a lot. Nice, <laughs> maybe, maybe I could do it. Maybe I could just talk and do like just talk I don't know, over a, bar- it, a just very white it. thing. It'll like, sound so much more meaningful. <laughs> dance like a white guy while you do it. Uh, no, this movie has a a lot of sentimental value to me because it came out in '93. I was like eight years old, and probably like '94, '95. I got invited to like a uh, someone's birthday sleepover, and this was the fucking movie that they were that oh. they had on. So That's like, awesome. oh yeah, it was great. And like, I remember like I was always a scared kid like when I was like really young. So like, this movie like terrified the shit out of me. Um, no and it was way. just so gooey and gross. And like, but I was so like locked in. Like I I loved it. I was just like scared as shit. So um, this was like probably the first like because cr- i'd watched like i think jaws and like the exorcist but like like the tv cuts like around that time so right. i didn't get like you know the full the full movies but like this was like my first gore fest and uh so it, it has a lot of um sentimental value for me and awesome. uh i've seen it like I watched it again a few years back. I think when it came on like Tubi or, or somebody was streaming it. So I was like, oh no, watch this again. And then when Vinegar Syndrome put out the, um, you know, the 4K version, I had to obviously buy it. But yeah, I uh, I love this flick. It's stupid as hell, um, you know, but I, I, I like that they made an effort to like develop some of the characters. Like Seth Green's character has like a little bit of a, a backstory, even though it's like, he just hates his yeah. dad because he just lost him in the woods or something. <laughs> like something ridiculous. <laughs> Fucking asshole dad. By the way. <laughs> um, See you later. And there's like a little drama between like the uh, the person who is like running this um, this camp for youths uh, and the daughter. And there's like a little bit of drama there. There's like a little bit of like subtle stuff that happens. That's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you mean other like th- when the guy takes 87 condoms. <laughs> To a yeah. Camp. Yeah. <laughs> what the well, if you were dating Amy Dolans, you would too. Back in the day, um, <laughs> I love uh, I love like the introduction to um, Carlton's the guy, you know, the actor who was Carlton in Fresh oh Prince's character. Uh, that basketball scene. Yes, Alfonso the, ba- the basketball scene. I'm also a huge basketball fan, so that probably also helps out. But. I um, Oh god, it was so awesome! And then he's like, "So insane." He's like, my favorite line in the whole movie, uh, besides the uh, Clint Howard, "I'm infested." Is uh, Carlton when he's like, "My name is Panic because I never do." It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like the <laughs> best line ever. It just it says so much about his character, you know. It, it just encapsulates so much in that one line. And uh, I'm probably digging way too much into this fucking movie. That's about ticks. No, you're not, man. You need people, but like, there's just like subtle little things that just make this movie like special. And um, like, you know, 
uh, Jack mentioned, the practical effects are off the charts. Um, Brian Yuzma, I think, was one of the producers on this. So, like, it yep, has that makes his, sense. his yep. like, thumbprint on it, especially, and we'll get into the spoilers, that scene at the end that is absolutely fucking crazy, which is By the, the way, there's no spoiler bell a for a 30-year-old movie. If you haven't seen it, just fuck it out. All right. So, like, at the end of the movie, when um, <laughs> Car- Carlton's character, who's been dead, uh, splits open and there's, like, the giant tick. Like, that scene is just, the like... The tick coming out of him is amazing. Practical yeah. effects is just so crazy and, and off the chart. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's the thing that sticks with you. Like, you, like when I think back to that movie from, like, when I first watched it, that was the one that was, like, everyone in, in at the sleepover was just, like, what the fuck is going on here? That's like, the scene it, that best exemplifies the movie because it looks amazing and it is so fucking stupid that a tick bigger than his body comes yes. out of him. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> awesome though. The only thing oh. that would have made that better if is when the tick came out, it started dancing to its not unusual by Tom Jones. Yes. Like the Carlton oh. dance. If it was doing that, that would have been amazing. I a mean I, of- I I was gonna say like I did notice a lot of like um like they sped up the film to to achieve a lot of the the practical oh, yeah. effects, especially like when he's like on the floor and he's like writhing and like you, he they just like sped up the film. You can see like the things that he's kicking go flying around at like fast speed, but it looks pretty yeah. cool. The one thing that kind of freaked me out this time watching it was like the dog scene um, when it gets inside the dog. Like the it looked really real. Which, yeah, like, I. I was like, I was like, how do they, how do they do that? I was because thinking the, the dog's head looked real, and then the body didn't look real, and I was just like, oh man, well, how do they? Well, Yuzna used a dead cat and Reanimator, so there might have been a dead dog from the pound. I was thinking that they, the dog was maybe drugged, and then he, people were underneath him doing that stuff, so that's, just manipulating his body. That's kind of fucked up. But Does that look like a that was legit a real dog? Right? It looked like I, a I real dog. I thought this was a found footage, and that was a real dog. <laughs> <laughs> when the vet was putting the needle in the dog, the dead dog's gut, and the that was great. The oh, the stuff is back on the needle. Oh. Yeah, and it's she's cutting it out. Oh, oh my god! When yeah, it's that pulling great. the blood back out of the needle, I was like, Jesus yeah. Christ! <laughs> what does she say when she squishes the um the tick in that scene? Something like, Oh yeah, when like there's no substitute for something. squishing when, it or something. When in yeah. doubt, yeah, when in doubt, stomp or squish it or yeah, something, something like, like that. Or, I am something stupid. Like when that. in doubt, yeah. squish it out. There's a lot of ramen noodles coming out of that thing. Look, a oh, lot yeah. of what you, a lot of what you liked, Tim, uh, is the stuff that I hated. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> shock me at all. Obviously, How did you guys write a book together? What's it was. Awesome? We should do a, we should do a making of uh, Wormwood so like people can understand the right. kind of animosity that went into making that. <laughs> yeah, really. No, the uh, I, I know what I know what kind of movie this is supposed to be. But I th- and I think it's maybe because I'm jaded, but I, I really hated the the writing of these characters because uh, the stereotypes were based on film stereotypes rather than stereotypes in real life. They were so, bad uh, stereotypes, yeah. No, so bad. And, and when you've got more than one, like, bratty entitled kid and none of them are going to die, that pisses me off. You know, it's like if we're going to see them, you know, be butchered, fine. You know, you're building hatred, but... Only one person dies. Yeah, that, well, that part bigger assholes because that I mean, was disappointing. I, I mean, I wanted to see uh, literally everybody get killed, except for maybe maybe Seth Green's character, not so much, or maybe his girlfriend or whatever that that they were that oh, Booze and Buddy's uh, daughter. daughter. Maybe those two. Those seem to be like the two. You know. Well, non, that's why uh, they would need to die. That's why I'd kill them first. Well, yeah, do it. But then you can give us some more of that awesome special effects because the special effects. There's so many, so many great scenes in this, but yeah, those characters, that basketball scene, I just wanted to turn the movie off when that came on. Oh man, I love it. Oh, I was all in for that basketball scene. That was oh, the basketball scene is great. (laughs) This is it's so great. Well, Jason, what's more, (laughs) you were drinking and watching it with friends, right? So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I followed the rules. He has no recollection. (laughs) So, (laughs) what's more unbelievable that giant ticks can take over this wooded area? Or that Seth Green could be the big swinging dick to save everybody. Which I was, one? I thought you were going to say. I thought, you were, I thought you were going to say, or is Seth, or the fact that Seth Green hit three jump shots in a row. That's what I thought you were going to. Yeah. 
That's what I say. Yeah, I've I've seen little people do that. That's all right. But yeah, Spud Webb. Cur- <laughs> yeah, but not not Spud Seth Webb. Green though. That guy can't can't throw. Do you see a? Hey, shot? he's robot all, chicken. He can do a lot of stuff. The form was terrible on that shot. There's no way that was going. Yeah, in. but he wasn't doing like the jump. Like the whole body was going up. He's like, yeah, dude. Hey, he shot it from his hand. knees, and he was like, he did one. The pressure of those, was like, on, man. He had a knife yeah. in his face, and he made that shot. Mm-hmm. Life or death situation under the bypass. <laughs> test oh. of his manhood <laughs> he had those electrolytes going <laughs> oh my god this movie was the only thing i wanted more of to be honest i'm trying to think of what i said at the end amy dolan's what i want more of because she was on the cover hell uh, you know, yeah it, it could have used nudity for sure but uh the body count needed to be higher yeah, yeah I, that is one time. thing like one uh a couple deaths but yeah relatively low body count for such a gooey gory movie which yeah. is kind of weird so yeah, the only Clint Howard, his dad, the sheriff, and then the, the two uh, drug Alfonso. runners, the two, the two drug, drug runners, runners. Alfonso. Alfonso. Car- Carlton. Yeah, that wasn't enough. You're right. They could have killed. Yeah, yeah. they could have killed, killed Galari's girlfriend. They could have killed the couple. Yeah, they could have done that. I mean, it's not hard to put a dick in a condom or something, you know, like to fuck with them. <laughs> Like, I don't know, you right. could have done something fun with that. Because they just dropped those condoms, and then there was nothing else in the story about it. And I was like, no, I want to know what dark shit is going on. <laughs> that could have been great foreshadowing. There might be Wait, something in the cutting room. You don't always carry that many condoms with you, like, on you at all times? I mean, oh. only to, uh, you know, a children's camp. That's the only time. Only at, only at Pervert Park. Right. Pervert See, Park. with Jack and I, every woman we're with is 15 years past menopause, so we don't have to worry about that shit anymore. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> but no, Jason, you're right. It would have been great if he put the condom on and the tick like <laughs> crawled yeah, in the hole. Yeah, there could have been something really fun there. Yeah. Let's yeah, do the yeah. reboot. Oh man, if they made a sequel to this, uh, I would love to write this shit. I mean, the rights would cost a good four or five dollars, probably. We might be able to swing it. You know what? I'm gonna reach out to 74 them pesos. After this. See see what, what I can what I can do. Interestingly, <laughs> I um I started watching because the uh the 4K version special set comes with like a three part documentary. Oh, and, nice. Uh, I, three part documentary. It, each part is like 20 minutes. So Ken it's, Burns it's really it's like, it's, yeah, it's really like an hour long. <laughs> but uh, I started watching the first one before I just like started falling asleep. But uh, the guy who originally wrote it wrote it back in like the mid 70s after like, um, like a lot of those attack, like creature attacks, like grizzly like and stuff like that. Grizzly yeah. frogs, like he cited was it Guy and like, Smith? Um, yeah, like his uh, he cited those movies as like his inspiration. So he wrote like the original draft in the seventies, and like nobody would would do it, and it kind of like got pushed around. But he always kept like working at it and like just doing drafts like over the years. And uh, I think he he worked with the director on like another film, and then gave it to him, and then the studios got involved. And then they they liked it the idea, but then they hired another writer to like actually write the screenplay for it. Right. And so like if you watch the credits, it'll say like story by the guy yes. who originally wrote the screenplay. Yes, and we saw, and, saw that. Yeah. And then um, you know the rest of the credits. But like, I thought that was a cool like it, this movie was like twenty years in the making. Um, Crazy. And that, it's just it's yeah. there's no plot. There's no, it's Fucking nothing. <laughs> This movie well, was probably. Be- <laughs> this movie has a plot, dude. Listen, this is a good. This is like I. That's what I appreciate about the movies because they actually tried to put a plot in there, and they they, you know, didn't have to. failed epically. <laughs> it that's had the classic. Good. It had the classic. Um, you know, why are the ticks mutated? Thing like. That yeah. Right marijuana, yeah, from that juice you make the marijuana the juice. plants grow with. Come on, to I make would have you liked grow to extra seen... fast and extra stinky. I would have liked to see Clint Howard's character uh, doing his like suffering more and traveling and, and going around uh, kind of like he was like the uh, the worm face to squirm, you know, that poor guy running <laughs> around and uh, yes. and having Clint be that kind of like that, you know, getting worse and worse and more and more ticks popping out like he's like the the host of some of the death oh, scenes. That would have been so they could have had more fun with the marijuana crops burning and everybody just getting high off of the getting high. The woods. There you go. Yeah. 
They could have done a lot of things, but I'm sure that just wasn't yeah. in the budget. So well, there's they, a, they blew their they blew their budget on on Carlton. There's <laughs> a deleted scene. Asking. There's a deleted um, alternate ending where the rest of the cast dies from Lyme disease a couple of years later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having neuromuscular problems. My face What's going on? Oh my god. <laughs> what was it? I that had that... I had Lyme disease, so I could I've lived it. Oh, that's the bad way. Once have... you have it, you always have it. It's always yeah, ready to I... pop back up. Yeah, again, Jack. I have friends who have it. It's like the worst thing to get. It sucks. Yeah. Maybe not the worst thing, it but it, it's bad. What were you going to say? Better Jeff? than. COVID. I was trying to remember what that that uh, the dark skinned dude uh, with the had his shirt off half the time. It was going out with the the blonde haired chick. Where they were laying there with his headphones, and somebody came up next to him, and he's like, "Suck my oh!" It's like, "What well, did you guys check that?" Or just yeah, whatever he was that. when he's on the when he's like sunbathing and yeah, the it's like yeah, just lines like that. It's like what? Who wrote it's that? ridiculous. Nineties like cheesy horror, dude. What are you? I know. Kids are ridiculous, yeah. Chad. They're just yeah. kids. They're dumb. just a grumpy old man. That was you the guy that. who had no. steroids. Don't don't yeah. even lie, Chad. You and I have had kids. We've seen them go from little pups to adults. Yeah. They're fucking idiots when they're teenagers. <laughs> so just they say that. stupid shit. We all did that. Yeah, all the time. I think this <laughs> shows a testament do? to the fact that we don't stop saying stupid shit as we get older. Yes. Nope. Just keeps going and going. There's no personal growth whatsoever. <laughs> How'd you like My the? Um, I like the forest fire effects too. Because there was some model work where they were, they were using. Mm. Oh my god, the models! Yeah. <laughs> they were great. I'd rather great. that than friggin' CGI fire. Oh, really absolutely! Would. And then the, like the ticks blow up when you. Uh, oh, the they fire. explode! Yeah. Oh yeah! Boom. What the hell was that? I was so confused. The first scene, I thought maybe he had flash paper, like a magician has. Mm-hmm. No, that was the tick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the hell? I feel like letting my cats out in the yard for a few weeks and just. See if I can get some ticks on them and if I can make them explode the same way. I live in so it's funny because I live in like a very uh tick infested like place and uh right. Lyme disease is, is like very um co- not common, but it happens often. And uh like when growing up, like after watching that movie, like I thought that was like true, like you can make them explode by lighting them on fire. <laughs> so like we used to like try to light them on fire and like this isn't working, they're not exploding. What's what's going on? No, yeah, I'm just burning my leg. Thanks. No, but that was the way to get them to, to, out of you was to like yeah. to burn them out. Burn them. Yeah. yeah. Right, man. But yeah, Tim wanted explosions. I understand. I wanted to explode. I wanted explosions. I didn't get that. Ticks are nasty, man. They like. Or you could just dig in you, and they're gross. You could take one yeah. of those melon ball things and dig it under the, dig it Oof. under your skin and. Just tear the whole chunk out. Make sure that Lyme disease is gone for sure. And, and then you can tell your ET sub, uh, fucking support group that you have scoop marks from your latest Ugh. abduction. Ugh. I do not want to. I had the big target thing that they talk about. It was right on my leg. Really? Yeah. I mean, no it looked way. like a freaking target, yeah, target I, logo. I've gotten bit a couple times and I've had like the uh, the ring and I've gotten tested. Once I got tested and it came back in negative positive. So I don't really know. I might actually have one. You can actually get tested lymphoma. like literally 20 times and not know if you have. Yeah. So that's it's, why I was lucky I saw the, the bite because my doctor was just like, oh, we need antibiotics right now. Yeah. Where'd you what's get the, it? What's the difference between Lyme disease and backyard. lemon disease? Uh, one is a little bit sweeter. Lemon disease is awesome. It's just you get it from drinking too much tequila with lemon. It's yeah. all fine. <laughs> Jesus. Lemon disease gets rid uh. of your uh, freckles. <laughs> <laughs> and you can read invisible ink too, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Definitely. And it gets rid of the grease on your dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Whisk the Ajax <laughs> squeak. <laughs> oh. So here, while we're live all together, has everyone here seen Barbarian yet? No, I have not. I, haven't. I gotta go. I've heard great things. Don't see any trailers. Don't listen to anything. Just go. Don't. Would either of you be interested in watching Barbarian and being back next week? Or is it is it in theaters or streaming? It's theaters. only theaters. I can try to make that happen. That's the best I can do right now. If you can try, then I'd say come on back next week because I think that should be the show next week because it's 
Uh, it needs to be talked about. I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. The week so. after that should be Pearl. Pearl for sure. I haven't seen X yet. You should oh, see oh. You should see X. Make that you happen. Know what? See X, don't like it, and then go watch our yeah, episode that... and then come back. <laughs> No, you know what? I think I think Chad would love X. Like that's a I think he would movie. Too. Yeah, it feels like a it is. Well, wait, isn't that a twenty four? Yeah. You know what? I, I already kn- love it. Then it I matter. know you like that, like it because you pitched me an idea for something very similar. Oh, this. great! Oh, to X. there you go. I wonder so, who else I pitched it to. Maybe, mm. maybe at the Alamo like by me last week, they played a double feature of X and Pearl the night that Pearl came out, which was oh, nice. pretty dope. But I was seeing Barbarian at the time, so I couldn't go watch it. Yeah, I want to see dope as fuck. I'll, I will try. Schedule is uh, kind of crazy, but I'll see what I can do. All right. Yeah, I so guess here's I'm the deal. See it Monday night, I guess. You yeah, gotta if I, go if, I see it. if I do see it Monday night, will probably be. The night that Jason, I Jason, just go see like a Wednesday matinee at 11 a.m. I, I can you so tomorrow I need to go tomorrow at 11 a.m. is what you're saying, or Thursday. It's just an idea. Yeah, I, I literally am not gonna see it till Monday, Hopefully. but you should because this is a big this is a big deal. Jack and I are gonna tell you right now, it's a big deal. Oh, yeah. So we're gonna try to make that next week's movie, and maybe Tim will be on. Maybe yeah. Chad if I see it, I'll, I'll I'll text you guys and I'll let you know. All right, we'll work it out. So, just trying to get you all excited, and maybe we get you all to go to a theater, buy some popcorn and a soda, to support the theater. Or I'm down. I need to. When you need Jack to see that movie in the theater, we supported nothing. Mm-hmm. Right, Jack. We paid for nothing at the theater. It was nice. Is it still in theaters Jaws? though? Barbarian? Yeah. Yes. It's been out for absolutely. like a month now, right? No. No, no. Like only a like week. a a week and a half or something. Two like weeks. That, so not really. Hurry yeah, up yeah. and go. I'm telling you. Hurry up and gonna... go. You X don't want to love it. Anything spoiled for that movie. You just gotta go see it as no. fast as possible. It's funny because uh, even if you see the coming attraction, you have no fucking clue what's happening in that movie. I don't think this is playing around me. <gasps> oh, <sighs> Oh wait, well, uh, it's gotta be. I think I found a theater. Anyway, let's All get right. the hell out of you're here. Not, we'll talk about it later. You're not back in the Ozarks. <laughs> okay, another great episode, Tim. It was great having you on. It was. It felt like old home week. Chad, we love you. Even though I'm you, you jumped right into Tim's fucking space as soon as you could. Uh, <laughs> I'm a scab. <laughs> you fucking scab. So anyway. If you like the show, spread the word. We love you. Love us back. And next week, we'll see what we're going to do. All right. Goodbye. See you. Bye.